She lied to the public, she lied to patients, she lied to doctors, she lied to regulators, and she even lied to the FDA with inaccurate data. On January 4th, 2022, the first self-made female billionaire in the United States. The youngest billionaire in the world. <laughs> Is that heady when you hear that? You know, it's, it's not what matters. She was found guilty of four counts of fraud and conspiracy in connection to her company, Theranos, a company she started as a 19-year-old Stanford dropout. In this video, we're exploring the astrological case of former billionaire Elizabeth Holmes and how her astrology chart lines up with her extraordinary rise and fall. One of the predicted archetypal themes of 2022 is the exposure of secrets and lies of the rich and famous and powerful, especially pertaining to America, with Pluto returning to its 1776 position of 27 degrees 33 minutes of Capricorn. We already have several examples of this, and these are Ghislaine Maxwell and the Duke of York Andrew, both are linked to the convicted American sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and it's likely there will be many, many more to come over the next two years. Elizabeth Holmes in particular is going to be a big part of the 2022 major entertainment projects. One is called The Dropout. This is an inspiring, an inspiring step forward. And an Apple original film called Bad Blood is a feature film from the big short writer and director Adam McKay that will star Jennifer Lawrence as the Theranos founder, Elizabeth Holmes. Briefly, here's the history of Elizabeth Holmes and her case. In 2003, Elizabeth Holmes was a freshman at the prestigious Stanford University in California. The story goes that Holmes wanted to democratize healthcare and also had a fear of needles, which motivated her to seek out a solution to get lab-worthy results from a very small, nano amount of blood. Determined to make this dream a reality, a 19-year-old, she dropped out of Stanford University and pursued this idea, despite several professors telling her that this idea was not going to work. Your idea is impossible, so you just keep trying. Do or do not, there is no try. That's your door. Okay. Medical professor Phillips Gardner at Stanford said it was impossible to do what Holmes claimed could be done. And by 2010, at 26 years old, she had $92 million in venture capital. She then recruited what has been called the most illustrious who's who to invest in Theranos and join her board of directors, including former secretaries of state George Schultz and Henry Kissinger. Her company Theranos was touted as a breakthrough health technology company. The company claimed that it devised blood tests that required very small amounts of blood and could be performed rapidly thanks to the small automated devices the company had developed called the Edison. All of this was done in stealth mode. It wasn't until 2013 that she announced in her first press conference that a $100 million deal had been made with Walgreens to put her Edison blood machine in every single store. In 2015, she was secretly investigated by the Wall Street Journal after several of her employees under fake names due to the heavy non-disclosure agreements and threat of litigation started to speak out secretly. They believed what she was doing was wrong. And that same year, Theranos was at its top net worth of over $10 billion. She owned half the company's stock, making her worth $5 billion. On July 7, 2016, her lab was closed by the Department of Health after a series of surprise inspections where they found that the Edison machine was not performing the tests they claimed. There were many allegations of false positive and false negative diagnoses based on the fraudulent blood tests. She raised hundreds of millions of dollars on the basis of this tech, not only being ready and working, but also commercially rolled it out to Walgreens. She became the first self-made female billionaire, and that is power. That is her natal Pluto, Mars, and Saturn stellium having a party in Scorpio. So now we're gonna piece out the clues in her natal chart. We don't have her birth time, so we don't know what her ascendant is, but we can still look at what's going on with transits to the planets in her chart and the general location of which planets are in which sign. Her fall is as spectacular as her stratospheric rise. For example, Pluto has been traveling over her Capricorn stellium, and the Pluto conjunct Venus retrograde happened within one degree of her natal Mercury. Her natal promise themes very prominently. She was able to get massive amounts of money from powerful people, mostly men. That's Plutonic. 
with a blood machine, which is Mars, with an air of mystery, confidence, intelligence, charisma, to create a very secret-based company, which is Scorpionic. Her natal moon is in an exact trine to Pluto, and a trine means these two energies easily combine, they harmonize, they're creatively interacting with each other. On the skillful application side of this trine, there's transformation, there's intensity, there's penetration, there's healing, harmonizing with nurturing, imaginative, and in Scorpio, the areas of nature's secrets, regeneration, breaking down, and in Pisces, the belief, the faith, the compassion, the merging. So this, this could be very skillful, but unskillfully, this combination of Moon Pluto in Pisces and Scorpio, it's destructive, it's repressed, it's suspicious, it's morbid, it's harmonizing with an over emotional, moody, inconsistent person. In, in Pisces, the unreal, the intangible, the delusional, fictitious, those can be the shadow side, the dark side of Pisces, and Scorpio can be power hungry. We can see with Elizabeth Holmes that some of these unskillful applications were being applied in her life. She had this emotional intensity, deep passionate feelings, powerful catharsis of repressed energies, emotions, tendency to brood and smolder. She challenged everyone with her strong charisma. Now she also has her natal sun square to Mars and Saturn and whole sign square to Pluto as well. And this is tempered strength of determination. This is a capacity for difficult or demanding work. She was a very hard worker. <laughs> I work all the time <laughs> and um, I'm basically in the office from the time I wake up and then working until I go to sleep every day. There's harsh boundaries collisions here though as well because her focused yang energies created this capacity to face danger and keep going, persistence, perseverance, even under difficult conditions. She had sort of a militant nature, and that's very Mars, Saturn, and square in the natal sun. Transiting Saturn is also on her natal sun. It's also Saturn squaring the three malefics, and Uranus opposing her three malefics in her chart. So what does that mean? Some of the Saturn-Uranus principles that apply here are rude awakenings, loss of freedom, unexpected problems, disruptions or delays, forgotten ideals. Also, the actions of her past are colliding with the possibilities of her future. This is just one of many counts of truth, justice, and exposure of secrets that 2022 will be bringing us, specifically of the rich, powerful, and well-connected. So stay tuned in 2022 for more huge shifts in truth, lies, power, and secrets, all with big stakes, especially economical, financial, that change our dependence on outer authority and lead us to a more intuitive inner authority. Who has power? What does it mean? And where our own personal power lies? This is really a reminder that if something seems too good to be true, and every test, Holmes says, would cost only a fraction of Medicare prices. It sounds genius, but what about those who say, that's not enough blood to do all the tests that need to be done, especially if someone's very sick and you're trying to figure out what it is? Every time you create something new, there should be questions. And to me, that's a sign that you've actually done something that uh, is transformative. Then really investigate it before buying into it. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.